Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Young. Today I'm going to share with you how I upgrade my setup to mix in Adobe Atmos in Pro Tools. Okay guys, before we start, the first thing you need to decide on is either upgrade your setup to Depths, short for Adobe Atmos Production Suite, or Dams, Adobe Atmos Mastering Suite. The biggest difference here is that Depths is a single system workflow, meaning your DAW and the renderer are on the same Mac, where DEMS work on a multi-system. You need a separate machine to run the renderer. Regardless it's on DAPS or DEMS, the workflow stays the same. In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to set up DEPS for free in only five steps and start working in Atmos right away. First step, we go to Adobe website and download a 90-day free trial of Adobe Atmos Production Suite software and a Music Panner plugin. I'll put a download link in the description box down below. After installing the software, we'll launch the Adobe Renderer software. Please launch it before opening Pro Tools. Now we will go to the Renderer software and start setting up. So first thing first, we'll go to the preferences of the software. And then we'll set up everything before we start. And so first thing first, audio driver, we want to be on core audio. And the second thing you will do is basically set up the audio input device to Dolby Audio Bridge. This is based on we're using the method called Dolby Audio Bridge, meaning our receiving incoming signal to the software, to this renderer through Dolby Audio Bridge. And then the audio output device, I want to go to whatever the um, output device I'm doing right here. And because I work from home and I don't have the surround setup, I'm gonna actually just connect it to a pair of headphones and then I can start some mixes. As soon as I'm ready to move on to the next stage, I can go to a Adobe certified Atmos Music Studio to finish my mix right there. The external sync source because I just did an upgrade on the Adobe Atmos renderer um, for the people who just download the latest version, which is the um, 3.7. If you already have the 3.7, this option is actually grayed out. You cannot choose any other option. This is the only way you can transmit your SMPT time code. And the input channel here, we just have to make sure that follow along with whatever channel you will be sending to. I'll put it on 129 default so far. And then the frame rate, Adobe has recommended for music users to keep everything at 24 frames per second. And then sample rates, um, 48K Hertz. And then the next thing will be to the headphone mode and make sure the headphone processing stays on and then the render mode will be binaural. Before we do anything, we'll go ahead and um, go to Pro Tools. So right now we're in Pro Tools and uh, there's a couple things we need to set up before we can start. The playback engine now, we should select to Adobe Audio Bridge. Basically, we're sending the signal from Pro Tools going into the Audio Bridge and then through that audio bridge, go into the Adobe Atmos renderer. And so now they can do all the calculations and all the renderer in real time, and then send it to your monitoring system. Okay, after this, we're gonna go ahead and set up the peripherals. So under setup, peripherals, and then you can see if you are a Pro Tools Ultimate user, you will see the last tab here is Adobe Atmos. And then we have to enable this. So now we have the connection here. So if anyone see the status light is blinking, meaning that you have to actually go in here and choose your machine. And if you work in a single system, that's the only thing that you see. But if you work on a separate system, then you will see like a separate machine here. Okay, after we set up the playback engine and the peripherals, we'll go to the I.O. setup. You can see here now I have my old setup for my stereo mixers. I'll go ahead and delete all of the path here. And then I'll import a settings from. So after you install the software, you will have all of the presets for I.O. settings and session templates which is really nice. Um, and today we're gonna select the Adobe Atmos renderer, the audio bridge stereo. 
go ahead and select it and now you can see we have all of the set up here we have the 10 channels of the bed which is for traditional surround sounding format and we have objects from 11 to 128 we have 118 objects to play with and now I notice here the mapping to the output box is not selected so we're gonna fix it right now before we start um, so we're gonna go ahead and highlight all the objects Okay, at the same time, we're going to hold down Shift Option Command and then click on one of the mono boxes. And now all of our objects are mapping to the right renderer input. Cool, and then now we hit OK. Create a new session. We'll call it App Most Setup. And um, you can see here, you can actually create it from a template. And it's a very nice template, but it's very overwhelming. So I'm actually going to start blank. The resolution will be 24-bit bit rates and 48k hertz sample rates. And then we'll leave it at interleaved for the stems and location that top is perfect. So we're going to go ahead and create. And then now you can see everything's blank. And then we'll go ahead here. We're going to select the objects. So now we can see the object options right on the sidebar. So we're going to go ahead and then import some of the stems prepared for Atmos Mix. Now what I want to do is actually assign all the I.O. to the 7.1.2 bed. Meaning that if I carry this session to any other rooms, if the room has surround settings and automatically everything will feed into the correct channel. If I will use objects for instance, all I need to do is go ahead here and then select the object channels I want to use. If I hit the bus here, now this channel turns into an object. This can be toggled on and off. Then I can just drag it around anywhere I want it to play in this 3D environment. There's also a couple of things we need to set up before we can start mixing. So I'll go ahead and create two mono tracks. And then one of them is the LTC. Remember the SIMT time code that we were setting up in the renderer earlier? So now we have to actually put a Dolby, the Dolby LTC generator on this track. Okay, you can see the frame rate here is 30 frames per second, which is not the same as our frame rate in the renderer. So go ahead and change that, which is under settings, sessions. And then we'll go ahead and change all of that to 24. Okay, now the setting is 24, meaning we can sync it up. We wanted to send this to um, our LTC channel right here. One thing we can test it here if we play here. And you can see the time code here is running, meaning that we are in sync, we're locking. This is great. And then in surround sound, there's a channel called LFE, which is the very low sub signal going into the subwoofers. Go ahead and create a mono aux tract. This is going to be for my um, LFE channel. I have this channel. I'm going to solo save it. Um, and then go ahead. I'll put a, um, actually a channel strip. And I'm going to carve the signal from the high pass future to 20. Change the slope to 24 dB. Per octave and then a low pass filter to 120 hertz and then um, slope to 24 decibel per octave right now i have a carved signal meaning that i'm only sending this range of frequencies into my LFE channel so that everything is very clean and controlled and then also the output of this of course i'm going to go into the LFE channel okay cool so if you notice here, there's also LFE channel that can be sent to, meaning that you can actually assign any stems you want to the LFE channel. I like to do it this way just because I will have more control of what kind of processing I want to put on the LFE channel. And in the future tutorials, I'm actually going to show you guys how to properly mix and then how to properly deliver your final master file.